like Christianity, for example. Christianity, the current version of Christianity, I'm not talking about the original version taught by Jesus, but the version of Christianity we have now was born in the Roman Empire. Uh, Emperor Constantine had a problem. His empire was falling apart. His father was the, was the previous emperor, and he had divided the empire among four sons. Constantine killed his brothers, took over their shares of the empire, and then he was forced to try to weld these pieces back together again into a unified state. So he instituted a state religion, and this was Catholic uh, religion, which means universal, so-called. And uh, because the Catholic Church was actually born from the state, it has always been part of a system of state control. Actually, it was the first thought control or mind control uh, that was invented in the West, but and that same technique has been used ever since to try to control people. So what's wrong with religion? Religion gives you a post-dated check. It says, yes, we'll give you salvation in the future if you follow our instructions now. Huh? So you have to become a slave to the religion and follow all the rules and regulations and follow the politics and so on like that in the hope that in the future you're going to get salvation. Well, we don't accept this. Just like you shouldn't accept a post-dated check when you sell your car. Huh? Similarly, you shouldn't accept a post-dated check in spiritual life. Real spiritual knowledge gives us illumination now. It gives us self-realization immediately. It allows us to change our consciousness very quickly from material to spiritual. Real spiritual knowledge in this world, as far as we know, is only available from one source, and that is the Vedas. Religion can't help us. Religion is part of the material system. We have to get out of the material system and into the spiritual system if we're going to make it through 2012. So I want to talk a little bit about the Vedic knowledge and how important this is to each and every one of us. The Vedas are the most ancient and complete system of spiritual knowledge available on this planet. The Vedas were written down 5,000 years ago. That's before the beginning of the current materialistic society. They were written down, but that doesn't mean they didn't exist before that. In fact, the Vedas are eternal. And before that, they were passed down as an oral history, an oral tradition, in an esoteric school. And we still have the esoteric school based on the Vedas. But the uh, writings contain checksums and similar sophisticated error prevention protocols to keep them from being altered. And over the course of history, the Vedas have never been altered substantially from their original form. We still have the original writings today, 5,000 years later. This is because of the unbreakable disciplic succession founded on the original Vedas that were written down 5,000 years ago. Now, Vedas are not Hinduism. Huh? Just like the Catholic Church is a religion based on the teachings of Jesus Christ, similarly, Hinduism is a religion based on the teachings of the Vedas. But actually, it's a compromise between uh, Vedic knowledge and other contemporary religions like Islam. Huh? Islam and Christianity had, both had large stakes in India. And so the British allowed the formation of Hinduism as a compromise among all these different religions. But it doesn't really work. And if you talk to anyone who considers them a Hindu, they can't really explain what they believe in, except uh, God is like some impersonal energy or something like that. That's not what the Vedas teach. So let's get a little bit into the teachings of the Vedas and how they can help us get through 2012. Now remember, I defined material civilization as based on centralization and exploitation. On the other hand, Vedic civilization is based on service and decentralization. So this is a much more powerful and stable form of civilization. 
Uh, it's stable because even if one part of the civilization is destroyed, another part can take up its functions, just like the Internet. The Internet is built to survive an atomic war. That means that if you destroy one part of it, it simply routes around the damage and continues to function normally. Similarly, Vedic civilization is based on decentralization. That means that the tools and resources needed to support the people are available everywhere. Everyone has the means of livelihood at their disposal. So if there's a problem in one place, then the other places can pick up and proceed normally from there. That if, if one country fails, then the other countries can survive. If one village fails, the other villages can survive. This is not true in our present system, because if the mechanism of distribution or manufacturing fails, then no one has the tools to continue. The whole thing has to be built up over again, and that we, in the meantime, everyone is suffering. So the Vedic system is much more robust. Now, why haven't we heard about this? This is such a wonderful form of civilization. But why don't we read about it in our textbooks? Because the same people who brought us the contemporary version of Christianity do not want you to know about the Vedas. Because the Vedas are a superior form of civilization. And if people in general knew about them, of course, they would want to go with that system. But the Vedas are unknown in the West because there is a vast conspiracy to hide them from everyone. Why do you think the Romans went and destroyed the library of Alexandria? Not once, but three times. Because that library and the scholars who studied and lived there knew about the Vedas. They knew about Vedic knowledge. They had ancient knowledge. And so the powers that be decided to destroy it. When Westerners came to Central and South America, what, does, what was the first thing they did? They destroyed the Mayans and the Incans. Why? Because the Mayans and the Incans had knowledge, had records of the Vedic civilization. They were part of the Vedic Empire 5,000 years ago. And of course, the Catholic Church didn't want us to know this. So the soldiers were given orders to destroy all the temples, all the records, kill all the priests, and wipe out those civilizations. And that's exactly what they did. Of all the ancient civilizations that were based on Vedic knowledge, all of them have died out or been destroyed, except for in India. In India, the ancient records are still there, carefully preserved up in the Himalayas, and I have been to these places. There are four of them. Four places where the complete Vedic records are kept safe from any influence of Western materialistic civilization. And my guru came to the West and translated all these literatures, or at least the most important ones, into English. Because the Vedic literatures are huge. They're very extensive and they cover every subject known to human beings. So, uh, for example, if uh, you look at the Bible, it's one little book. It's about that thick. Uh, and the Bible itself states that it's incomplete. Uh, so... If you translated the Vedic literatures, they would fill a whole library. They'd fill a whole house from top to bottom. And uh, they give complete knowledge of everything, from spiritual life to every facet of material life as well. So these Vedic literatures are there, and they've been there for thousands of years. But the reason we don't know about them is because there's been a huge effort to keep them secret. For example, if you write a book based on the Vedic literatures, if you treat them in any way uh, as a valuable literature or as anything but mythology, you won't be able to get it published. Huh? You can try it. I've tried it. No publisher will publish my works. I had to self-publish them. Why? Because they treat the Vedas seriously as a bona fide source of knowledge, not just a myth, not just a religious story, but as scientific knowledge. What does scientific mean? It means we can perform the experiments and we can observe the results and we get the same results as given in the source literatures. Now remember, the difference between material and spiritual is that material things are temporary. Spiritual things are eternal. So the knowledge in the Vedic literatures 
is eternal. It has no beginning and no end. It's unconditional. That means it's absolute. It's true in every time, in every circumstance, for every person, in every place, and in every condition or situation in life. You can't say the same about material knowledge. Material knowledge is temporary and conditional. For example, if I say, it is raining, well, right now, that's not true. It's not raining. Huh? Maybe tonight it'll rain, and then that statement will be true. But if I say something spiritual, such as the soul and God are completely spiritual and eternal, that truth is always true. And it will be true for everyone in every condition of life, in every time and place. That is absolute truth. And it has a fundamental different quality.